Another category of assets is intangible assets. The term intangible means unable to touch something with no physical substance. Unlike PP&E that we can see and touch, like a computer, intangible assets cannot be seen and touched. They're invisible. Patents are one type of intangible asset. This is an exclusive right to make a particular product or use a specific process. If you invented a new product or way to make a product, you would want to get a patent so that you're the only one who could make that product or use that process without someone else copying you. At least for a little while anyway. Patents have a life of 20 years, so they will run out and then enable competition. Copyrights are another type of intangible asset. These are rights to original works of authorship, such as books, poems, music, films, paintings, photographs, architecture, and computer software. The copyright protects the author's right to reproduce and sell their works for the life of the creator plus 70 years. Trademarks are yet another type of intangible asset. This protects words, phrases, symbols, and designs of a company and or product. For example, the Nike swoosh is trademarked and can only be used by Nike or with their permission. Trademarks have a life of 10 years, but can be renewed indefinitely. Franchising is a way to expand your business without having all the cost of expansion. Granting a franchise gives a business, known as the franchisee, the exclusive right to use that company's, the franchisor's, name and sell its products in a particular area along with other benefits such as training and advertising. Many major corporations are franchise operations such as McDonald's and Starbucks. The franchise fee paid to these companies in order to establish a, a franchise is an intangible asset on the franchisor's records. One final intangible asset is goodwill. No, not the store. This goodwill is something that is created when one company acquires another company. In that process, the company that is being purchased or acquired is valued. If that value is less than the amount paid to purchase it, the difference is goodwill. Assume you're buying another company. The fair value of their total assets equal $100,000 and the fair value of their total liabilities equal $80,000. Therefore, the company has a net worth or net assets of $20,000. However, we pay $50,000 for the company. The difference of $30,000 is goodwill. Why would we do this? Pay more than the company appears to be worth on paper? Well, this value is calculated from assets and liabilities that are recorded on the financial statements. What if something else is of value to the company that's not recorded on the financials. For example, perhaps the company is on a prime piece of real estate that is extremely valuable and you're purchasing the company just to sell it for this increased property value. Or perhaps the company has a large and extremely loyal customer base. Neither of these values would be reflected in the company's net asset valuation. Intangible assets can be purchased from an outside source or developed within the company. If they are purchased, the cost of purchasing the asset plus any additional cost involved in getting the asset ready for use are included in the asset account. If the intangibles, however, are developed, all costs involved are expensed rather than included in an asset account. These costs are commonly referred to as research and development costs or R&D.